This telescope is our favorite small refractor, but also it is the only small refractor we've ever had. And also it's mid, uh, mid when, when bankrupt and um, this telescope It's discontinued! Completely, so how about we put this away for some time and try something new, which is this new Radian telescope. This one is a Radian 75, so it's a bit bigger, uh, but the same look, the same um, black on red design, which is really great. And we're going to be trying out tonight, and I'm sure it's going to be... Um, it's gonna be cool! It's gonna be amazing. It's very similar to the mid we have here. This one is 70 millimeter. This one is... 75. On the other hand, this one is a bit faster. Uh, it's f5, but this one is f5.4. We are about to try it tonight, and I can't wait because we've been so in love with the mid behind here for so long that I, I wonder if this one is better or not because it's a bit slower, but it's a bigger aperture as well. So um, yeah, it's very hard to, to decide which one on paper is better. So yeah, we'll image tonight with this new Radian. You might have noticed the cheap looking dovetail on top. Yes, just like I did with the mid a while ago, I went ahead and bought a $2 metal plate, which I'm using as an accessory dovetail for this Radian as well. Okay, all the way. It's nice to have a, a partner for this. It sure is. But of course, you should never trust your partner, so always double check. That is very strong. <laughs> all right, let's balance. All right, perfect. And then this side, really quick. Perfect. Okay, we are ready for tonight. Just have to put the cables everywhere. I hate my tail. <laughs> Got him. So, where is the flattener or reducer? Well, this telescope is a Petzvold telescope, which means it is built in, which is great. Uh, you don't have to worry about having a uh, flattener slash reducer on the side to, to screw in. It's already built in. It's already built in, so it's amazing, oh. which also means it's very simple to achieve back focus super easily. So Something we all hate doing, let's be real. Seriously, I, I, I just wish that most Telescopes these days would be Petzvolts because it's so simple to just screw the camera in and just image. You don't have to, to care about those weird back focus issues and, and adapters and all that. So it's very simple. And this one here is uh, fully full frame ready. So this camera here is a QHY 600M, which is full frame. And so we should have a, a very perfect uh, field of field view, view with no uh, weird stars on the corners. So we'll check for that for sure. So the first target that we ever shot with our small refractor was maybe in episode 13, we were shooting the North American Nebula. And it was gross. We were so happy. Uh, you will see it right here. You gotta like... think about the before times Antoine yeah. and Dahlia though. They were so proud of this, but like... But now it's a no-go. Like we could never do this and be happy. So as a, uh, as a, uh, a fight back kind of thing, as a revenge, we will be using this small refractor for, once again, NGC 7000, which is the North American Nebula. Wow. So we'll uh, prepare our night here really quick on Sky Safari. So we will be also able to include the Pelican Nebula in there. So we'll have two main uh, nebulae in our field of view. And we'll be imaging from home, so for three nights. One night for S, one night for O, one night for H. We'll see if we have a better result. Will Let's we? do our best. We waited for dark and got ready to image our target. The North America Nebula is a large emission nebula that can be found in the constellation of the swan, Cygnus. Just like most other famous nebulae in the night sky, NGC 7000 got its name from its shape, which outlines the continent of North America. Central America is also part of it. It actually makes the most popular section of the object, the Cygnus Wall. NGC 7000 lies 2,600 light years away and has a magnitude of 4.0, although it varies depending on the exact region. It was discovered in 1786 by William Herschel. By the way, this was the last time that I used SGP, as I have since switched to Nina, and I'm never going back. We imaged the North America Nebula for three nights, with a total integration time of 15 hours. That's a lot of hours! Here you can see how much signal we got from each channel. 
If you'd like a similar idea on many other targets, go through our narrowband signal expectation page and you will know exactly how much signal to expect for each filter on the target of your choice. I processed the data using my usual processing workflow and ended up with the result I liked. <laughs> this is the old version, and here comes the new one. Although I like the blue dominance, I decided to end up doing an opal palette, which is also great. We spent as many nights as possible with this telescope and imaged four extra targets! Here is the entire Cygnus loop, which fits perfectly in the field of view using a full frame camera. Here is the Omega Nebula, the Iris Nebula with a ton of dust all around, and the Wizard Nebula. All right, so to conclude, uh, I am really in love with this Radiant 75. Uh, the images we got were really pretty, and I think it's great to have a full-frame camera on such a small, you know, slash, mid-small telescope like this one here, because you can really capture such impressive views of most large nebulae. And then design-wise, uh, once again, this is like, you know, black matte with red accent, which is visually very pleasing. And of course, the most important aspect for me is the built-in reducer slash uh, field flattener and uh, making it, you know, a Petzval telescope. And I am all for Petzval telescopes. So thank you to OPT for sending this over for us to try out. Uh, we're going to send it back now. And, um, but I think we'll miss it because I'm really, really in love with it. So we'll see you guys next time for another video or review and uh, class guys. Bye.